Hey everyone, it's Rainbow Rage, and uh, I'm here for episode 2 of my uh, Inkscape Pony Vectors tutorial. Uh, so, uh, we're just going to talk about setting up your environment and getting started. We might get onto strokes. I don't, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'll probably make a third video on that. Uh, but setting up your environment is important because uh, you you can just dive in and start drawing, but it's it'll, it'll come back to haunt you if you don't if you're not organized on it. Um, so it is a good good idea to take you know that you know minute or so to set up everything properly first. And then uh, well, once once you get started though, it's it's very simple. Like you, you just want to. You want to improve your vectors, like you, you just gotta keep doing them and practicing. And go, go online, like upload your, upload your vectors, and uh, get, get uh, people to take a look at them, critique them, and help you out. There's plenty of great resources for that. Uh, where I got started off was on the, on Reddit here, then MLP vectors, uh, Reddit.com/r/MLP vectors. Uh, it's just uh, just a place for people to dump their vectors, and it really most of the time people are there looking for critiques or asking questions on how to vector. So it, it really it's sort of turned into like a help group, really. I mean, myself and a bunch of other great vector artists are always on here, and uh, you know we can help we'll answer questions, give give critiques on your work. Um, to help you, just, uh, you know, we all like helping out people, helping them improve, and uh, you know, before long he'll be doing the same. So, <laughs> it's 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 a really great place to get help. Uh, alternatively, you can look at uh, MLP Vector Club on Debian Art, um, where it actually it's it's a good place. You can look at other people's vectors, see see what they've done. Um, we actually recently start requiring people to upload their uh, their vector files as well, so you can actually see the raw vector files and see how they put everything together, uh, which I, I guess is a useful tool. And uh, to actually submit your art, it's a it's a pretty the acceptance, uh, yeah, to get accepted, it's a pretty high standard of quality. But uh, you know, it's still don't don't let that scare you. Like your probably your first few vectors won't won't be good enough to get accepted, but for sure, like if uh, you can you can just send send in your vectors, uh, and myself or one of the other moderators will take a look at it and help out. Cause you know we we always we always like to see new vector artists and uh, especially ones that are looking to improve and uh, get better. Uh, Cause you know the the more people there are making vectors, the more interesting stuff we'll, we can see. Uh, getting to the meat of the video, though, uh, you always want to set up a good environment, and you want to start out with the two dialogs that you're always going to want to open is Control Shift L and Control Shift F for your fill and stroke and your layers. Uh, yeah, these you're going to be using these two dialogs all the time, and it's not necessary but I find it much easier to deal with uh, colors if you control shift W and use your swatches dialog as well uh, if you can set up your own palettes for ponies it's it's a bit of work because you can't actually create your own palettes within Inkscape you have to manually create and load them uh, but there is a if you see on the side here you have a choice I've only made it palettes for a couple of ponies. I uh, started doing that recently, but uh, there's the there's the auto palette, which uh, which you know we can just live create a palette in a few seconds. So that's what I like to use. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to import your your reference image into your reference layer. Uh, you can leave it named as layer one. I like to re I like to rename it. But that's uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we want to you want to go to to import bitmap up here, and then find your image. I find 
uh, Inks you can you can open images directly, but I find Inkscape doesn't like it when you do that, so I tend to open a blank canvas and then import it. So for importing, you have two options. You can either embed it directly into your SVG, when you'll end up with a larger file size, but it'll be a standalone file, or you can link to your SV, or you can uh, just put a link into your SVG that links to the image. So that will end up with a smaller file, but you, uh, if your file path ever changes or you want to use, uh, you'll you'll lose it. But uh, for a reference image, I generally just link it because I don't change my file size as often, and I'll delete it before I upload the vector. Um, so there we go, is that. I'm going to always lock it so that you don't accidentally drag it around. And you'll notice there's a, there's this little box here that Inkscape gives you. That's the actual page of the SVG. Um, you can ignore it for now, but uh, basically what it's used for is when you when you want to view the SVG, it'll only show what's on the page. So it's a good thing to keep in mind um, that you do eventually want to fit your page to your drawing at the end. But you can you can always resize the page to whatever you need. So uh, you can you can really ignore it until you're finished. Um, so we're gonna do bonbon, and uh, like I said, I always like to set up my colors first, so I'm not you know. So I'm not like making an object and then like having to take a break to set up the color and then making another one and I have to go get the color for that. And that's that's just uh, frustrating for me. So the best way to do it is of course to set up your swatches. And uh, you can you just like in your reference I just, just get a little like box there to, to hold the color hold on to the color. And you can get color directly off of the image. Um, with the dropper, uh, it's generally your the colors will be distorted, but because uh, Inkscape's dropper, because you, you can drag and get an average, is usually not that bad. And uh, you get the color there, and then you hit swatch, and it will. I'll switch to grid; easier to see, and it'll it'll create um, the swatch of that color, um, which is handy, uh, but. So, so you can go directly off of the image like that, but uh, for consistency, it's best to use a color guide. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of color guides out there. Um, where, there we go. Yeah, there's 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 a lot of different color guides out there. Um, the one I've been using, and I think is endorsed by the. MLP Vector Club is this one here. Um, so that, that's the one I'll use, and it's this has got it's good because it's got most of the ponies and all the colors. Mo like there's no there's no perfect color guide, so but uh, this one is for the most part pretty good. So I'll we'll get the colors directly off of there, and we can actually compare the two, and that actually looks almost exactly the same. So you know it's a pretty good color guide. Color guides are also good because sometimes your your reference is because there's good lighting in this my reference image here, but sometimes it's it's nighttime or your reference is in the shade. Uh, but yeah, you basically just find all your colors that you'll need. And create swatches for them. Let me go through that. Just take a few. That's all the colors on there. And once you have the colors, you can either delete or keep the guides or anything. It doesn't really matter. Um. But no, it's it's always good to set up your colors at the start so that you can, it's keeps it more streamlined once you get going. And yeah, now we're now we're, now we're ready to vector. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually gonna call it there for this video just so we don't end up having half-hour videos. Um, 
So uh, check out the next one to see how to actually create paths and strokes.